So we're in, the, we're in the studio with Mark Nimitz doing an interview. Mark, for a lot of people out there who don't know who you are uh, or who you've worked with, how many years you've been in the scene? Uh, depends on what scene you're talking about. <laughs> we'll say the Inland Empire. The Inland Empire. Um, since the mid, I guess, late 80s, uh, started off with a, a band called Smokestacks, which locally, I guess, uh, people know. And uh, that kind of is the band that got me affiliated with uh, Bob and Lisa uh, from the Bell Rays. We used to share a lot of show dates back then. Uh, and that was mostly Riverside. Uh, the UCR Barn, where I think I first saw a cram uh, uh, camper van Beethoven and by chance. Didn't know who they were. And just went to a barn show that night and saw them. Uh, so it's cool that years later we're all still kind of associated with, these, uh, with each other. And, yeah, it's been a, it's been an interesting journey. <laughs> I'll say, what, what what would you say about longevity? What's the one thing that really keeps you coming back to doing what you do? That's a great question. Uh, me and uh, Chris Leroy talk about that sometimes. We always say, I wonder if bands like the Rolling Stones would have actually kept playing had they not been so successful. Uh, so we always feel like we actually do something um, that. We just do because we love to do it, you know. Uh, there's, there's just the people, you know, and the opportunity to share our songs. Um, and so, any stage to me is an important stage, you know. Whether it's five people or five hundred people, it doesn't really matter. I try to always figure that that's an important thing for somebody, and it's reciprocated back at me. And um, I think that's what motivates me really is just to. Uh, you write songs and you want to have somewhere to play them, and that's what makes me keep going. You so you got, you got believability. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah, it's a, it, you know, it sometimes is a bit of a, a struggle, and not in, you know, not the obvious ways financially or whatever, but uh, it's hard sometimes um, to not think. Another reference to our folks here, uh, Bob Phantom, uh, we were talking about the other day, and he's like, you know, I'm just more, I'm, I'm a badass. And, uh, you know, I think, I really think I am. And there's nothing wrong with that. And that's why I just keep going out there and, and continuing to try to prove that. You know, and just say that, uh, you know, if we're not the most known person in the world, it doesn't really matter as far as, uh, you know, what we feel inside. And I think it takes a certain amount of uh, tenacity to, to uh, just, you know, say, listen to me, you know, for half an hour or whatever it is. And as long as you accept that as a responsibility uh, to your audience, I think then uh, you're good to go. It's not really an ego thing. It's just uh, just that will to, to want to share. Nice. Yeah. Any advice for up-and-coming younger musicians that you could lay on them to help them get through? That's a good question, too. I actually uh, own and operate a music school. And uh, so... I have all these young kids that are starting out, and uh, the competition is fierce. Um, the you know, as far as if you're trying to uh, make it, I guess you know. So again, if any time more than ever to do it for the sheer love of it would be crucial now, right now because uh, I'm constantly I'm not one of these old guys who's like there's no good music out there anymore. Right? There's tons. I mean, the talent level and some of the creativity that's out there. If there's one thing, and I used to say this, uh, you know, I used to say when I was younger, I'd say, well, when I get older, I'm going to stop kind of clogging up the, the arteries of music and let the young people do it. Hmm. Because I used to feel that way when I was young. I felt like, where are these old guys are still kind of taking over everything. And I'm not taking over, but they're just getting in my way, you know. And right. now I'm kind of in that boat, but uh, they, uh, I don't know. You know, just the talent level is just is insane. I mean, there's so many. Every there's Harley day goes by where I'm not turned on by somebody new that's under 25. So that really, uh, that's a real, that's a strange thing. I don't know. I don't know what my daughters play music and they're amazing. Um, and probably the biggest thing that they kind of deal with is that like. Guys always photobombing you, man. Why don't? 
why do I do this, you know, when there's so much talent there? Yeah. Uh, and it's, and again, to just repeat myself, I would say it's more important now than ever to just really just do it because you can't not do it. Right. Uh, you know, that's how I feel. I, I, you know, every time I think I'm going to take these to hiatus or, you know, I'm just going to, it just, uh, I'm just not happy. You know, so when, when, I'm, when I'm doing something, whether it's the smallest little thing or whatever it may be, uh, it brings joy in my life. So what's wrong with that? You know? Uh, and uh, you call on your passion. Well, yeah, absolutely. That's good. It's definitely a passion, and, and, and I always feel like you either have to be, you know, an extreme, extreme talent, you know, just beyond belief. Uh, to to dominate the stage, or you just have to be authentic, you know. And so I think authenticity is is the key, you know. Uh, again, I see a lot of people rehashing the old styles of music, and I think that that's great. Um, but the thing I'm really looking for is the authenticity. Is there some way that I feel like I see their heart somehow coming out for the people? And, uh, that's a, I don't know how you work on that, you know, exactly. You can work on your craft, your, your ability to play or write songs or whatever, but to be authentic is uh, really tricky. So I would say search deep and find your, you know, that authentic aspect of what you do. And if you can, I think then you are in one group and everybody else, no matter how talented or lack of talented they are, are kind of in the other group. So um, that's what I strive for, is just to try to be as authentic as possible. I've heard you can't fool people yeah. when it comes to your craft. If you're on it, it's obvious, especially the people that have been doing it for so long. Yeah, and, and for me it's been, you know, the most, probably the thing I feel like I've gained out of it the most is the uh, respect or whatever from my peers. You know, from people that are doing the same thing as me. And, you know, I feel like a lot of times when I look out and when I'm playing, it's people that do the same thing as me. Um, so if they're there and they're giving me a little bit of time, then uh, I feel like I'm doing something right. And I'm worthy to be there and I should continue and, and go back again and keep doing it. If, that, if I feel like if that went away, I could, I could forget how to play the guitar maybe or forget how to sing. And I could still be authentic somehow and, uh, and do something, you know, that, that's artistic. So uh, that, that's the most important thing to me, to feel that that's what's happening in, in what I do. So as long as that doesn't go away, I'm just going to keep on trucking. Nice. Good yeah. choice of words at the end there. <laughs> well, hey, Mark, I want to thank you for your time. It's been and, my pleasure. Uh, so far as the respect goes with your peers, man, I hear a lot of it. So yeah. thank you for your time. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thank you guys for doing what you do.